Hello and welcome back to the Digital Marketing Podcast. My name is Kieran Rogers. I'm Louise Crossley. And I'm Daniel Rolls. And today we have a guide to picking a CRM. So let's start by saying what a CRM is. I'm sure most people know, but it's a customer relationship management system, which fundamentally means it's where you store your customer data. You can store you know, who your existing customers are, who your leads are, all that kind of information about them, what they've done previously. But most of them will go beyond just storing a bit of data. Now, the, the reason we're, we're kind of doing this is I think we get more questions about this than, than pretty much anything else of which CRM should we go for. It's such a pain point. Yeah. It's because it really now impacts your ability to do decent marketing mm -hmm. because without it, you can, you can do stuff, but you don't know much about your target audience. We've spoken about it in a couple of previous episodes about this loss of third-party data. So targeting ads is not going to be as precise until some new technologies come along. So the more first-party data you can collect directly through your website about your audience, the more power you've got, basically, to do good and effective and personalized marketing. And actually, a decent CRM will allow you to do that. So the, the general thing that um, what they now do or something they can do is that a lot of CRMs will have a bit of code that then goes onto your website and that then will track people within the website what they're doing and if they've ever signed in so you've got their email address it will then start to record right we've got this person's email address but we know what they've done on the website we know what forms they've filled in we know what pages they've been to what they've downloaded and you can kind of build a profile and a picture and then you can start to say what do I want to do with that you might already have this information as well normally, but using so many different plugs, plugins that the information's on one app and then it's on a different software and yeah. it really brings it all in together. Yeah, so this idea of uh, SCV, single customer view, becomes really important. And single customer view is saying, I've got all that in one place, so I can use that as a whole to then trigger things, okay? Now, the things I might trigger, they might be emails, just sending certain things to certain people. It might be changing my website content. So you and I might see a different thing on the same web page because we've got different interests. Uh, it can be chat uh, interaction, so conversational design, the idea of making chatbots more useful. I can make a suggestion. And I could say, oh, you've done this previously. You might be interested in this. And that would be a bit more useful than the, can I help? Or, you know, are you interested in this out of the blue? Um, but I can also go through and I can build ad audiences. So I can take all those people and I can put them into some sort of online ad or a social ad to, to target stuff at people as well. So we are going beyond what's a basic CRM. We're actually getting into, there's a lot of three letter, three letter acronyms here, I love this. So it's a CRM, quite often they're also an ESP, an email service provider. They're quite often a CMS, a content management system uh, as well. Maybe we should just invent some new phrases for this. What, like, what can we make three letter like? acronyms? Castrel Mange. No, that, doesn't doesn't that Manji wasn't very good at it. That sounds awful. Yeah, so so I think that <laughs> it's it's working out what functionality you need. So with like anything with this, what you want to do is start by taking a step back and saying, what do you actually need to achieve with this? What are your objectives? Look at your user journey. And we we've got that template that you built, Kieran. And mm. you did it on the see, think, do care. Mm. And we used it for designing actually what we wanted to track into GA4. But equally, you could go through and go, what's our objective at this yeah. part of the funnel? And actually, therefore, what do we need to be able to put into our CRM system? What do we want to do with that? Have we got the capability of doing it? Yeah, from, yeah from we, we use that because see, think, do, care covers the full spectrum the funnel, right? of the funnel. Yeah, from the very top C okay. through to the so action that, and, that, and the that, loyalty afterwards. That makes logical sense. So if I'm going to set up a customer relationship management, right. I build it around all stages of the customer interaction Because even journey. at the top, yeah. you want to get people in yeah. so you can collect their data yeah. in the first place, yeah. right? So you could you can build out your plans around that. I think very often one of the problems is that we get kind of paralysis by the opportunities that are out there, Like because actually all of this is possible. The reality, though, is particularly when you first start out, you won't be using much of this data at all. And right. in fact, I'm, very often I come across organisations where you know, they've, they've started up, they've opened up an e-commerce store, they're on Shopify, 
they've maybe integrated somewhere like Clavio, mm. and that is their CRM, like between Shopify and Clavio. But they, you get to a stage when actually you can't answer the questions you want to answer, and you can't sort of find and mine those opportunities. And there is, but there is a ton of plugins that you can plug in that extend that. But Louise, to your point earlier, you end up stuck in a place where, oh yeah, but that doesn't talk to that, and oh, well, you that spend most of that. your time trying to marry up the data oh, you do, in the first you, place. You, you do, and that's where you know, a, a bit more of an all singing, all dancing CRM system comes into Although, its own. By equally, I see lots of people that have got HubSpot and Salesforce and you can do everything with these things. Yeah. But are they? No. <laughs> no, I mean, that's the problem is they're still, so powerful yeah, some of these tools. Yeah, yeah. So let's, because I mean, let's because talk there's about a lot of effort in getting you, it set up. We, we use HubSpot. Well. I'm a big fan of HubSpot, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, Salesforce, used it loads of times. Brilliant tool. It's really good. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of depth, quite complicated yeah. from that point of view. You've also then got things uh, like Microsoft Dynamics. Um, you've got Eloqua that will go with Salesforce. You've got all these kind of different things. And you can have loads, loads of power, but not be able to utilize it unless you've got the time and the training to do that. Okay, so there's a, there's a hidden cost of that as well. Some other hidden costs as well. We used a particular platform, which I'm not going to name and shame. We invested lots of money into it. And we never got it working on our website properly. It just wasn't tracking things. And then we got HubSpot and it worked out of the box pretty much. So, And there's a free version of HubSpot as well as the, the paid for versions. These tools can get expensive though, because you you go, well, I want that. Yeah. And then I want that functionality and I want, oh, it's an additional monthly cost each time. And we spend tens of thousands of pounds on this, this every year. Um, the other thing is you might miss out is... Integration with your existing technology stack, how complicated is that going to be to do? But there are tools out there like Zapier and stuff like that that might help with these things, plugging things into each other. But the, the big hidden one for me a lot of the time is your active marketing users. And this is an increasing thing. So you might say, uh, I get a CRM and it says you're going to have unlimited users in your database. And you go, oh, that's brilliant because I've got like 20,000 people that have been on the website or have registered or wherever it might be. You go, okay, cool. Uh, it's unlimited. Oh, nice. Uh, but if you want to actually engage with them, like send them an email, oh, they're an active marketing user, you've got limits. And you're like, oh, okay. And there's tiers of access. We stumbled across this a few times. Oh, we stumbled across this spectacularly. So <laughs> oh, it was, this was epic. Yeah, so we, we, our developer <laughs> built something and accidentally <laughs> triggered everyone that was in our database, I think it was 30,000 of them, via the, to API. Be, via the API to be marketing users. And I got an 18,000 pound bill the next morning. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> that, that's a fairly lumpy bill to get, right? And we got it. And what's going on? And luckily, thank you, HubSpot, they went, yeah, you can reverse that. Don't I, worry, but don't do it again, please. I've seen exactly the same thing with Salesforce, and right. they are quite good. Like they'll, yeah. they'll, They give you a little bit of like, yeah. understanding. Now, now we've just mentioned those. Those are the two, you know, two of the leaders. There's things like Sugar CRM. There's mm. some free ones out there. You can actually use WordPress or Shopify with some plugins, and that will give you a fairly decent CRM as well. I mean, it can be problematic. I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't recommend that. You can use MailChimp as a yeah, CRM. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend using WordPress just purely because you're storing a heck of a lot of customer data in something that's, uh, yeah, hacked a lot, should we say. I'm not saying it's that, but if you don't keep up to date with all the latest, like, releases and update all of your plugins, that can open up data, like, holes. And if you get, it, it, once hackers get in, if they've got access to your full CRM, like, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's really bad. Also, the other thing we found is that you did lots of different plugins within WordPress they all tend to use one table in the database to store the data. Um, there's user meta. I mean, it, it's, it's changed a little bit now. But what we found is when you're trying to untangle the data, there was this one table and it had tens of millions of lines in it, which was slowing down the entire system because every plugin is trying to stick stuff in some place that it kind of shouldn't be putting it. So I, I think it, you're, you're better off not going down that route if you can. What you have to think about, though, is vendor tie-in. So say you've gone down the route of using a particular system and they suddenly go, we're doubling our costs or we're doing a change, you need to rebuild your system. You might go, well, no thanks, I don't want that. Because most of these are SaaS, they're software as a service, you are tied in. And the great thing is you get the latest updates, you get the upgrades automatically, you don't need to, I remember the old bad days, you'd buy a bit of software, install it in the office somewhere and then you'd have to keep upgrading it and it would break the website and all those kind of things, so big problems. But now the problem is if you want to move to a new system, you're going to find yourself in a situation where it's actually a bit more complicated than you like and you kind of get tied in. I think with the cost, mm. you know, like anything above 20, 30 grand, my eyes start to water. But like, actually, you just need to think about this in a different way. Like, you wouldn't think twice if you need it 
about hiring an additional member of the team. That's how I justified it. I was that, going to say that's what actually... you have to do. You have to sort of go. Do you know what? Yeah, but look how much time it would save, and look how much more capability it would give. What like we, we... can focus on the target yeah. audience instead of fiddling around yeah, with technology. Yeah, and, and you you know you wouldn't so for less than the cost of a you know a, a junior marketing assistant, you mm. can get you know some really great tech that just is a game changer and gives you well just gives you a place at the table. Like if all your competitors have got this, yeah. they'd be running rings around you. That's exactly what we did. So we, we were looking at this and we were a relatively small business at the time, grown a lot since then, but we were looking at it going, this is going to be £30,000 a year, £25,000, £30,000 a year in total. Um, we can't really justify that. And then we we're like, well, let's take on a sales, but oh, wait a minute, that's going to cost £45,000 a year and I can probably get most of the way there with this. Yeah. So that was our trade-off and it worked. And, and that did us get a lot more capability, a lot more results. We could track it. We could identify a lot more things as you go through. So... The other thing I would do is speak to people that are using that platform and you will kind of get the warts and all kind of opinion on what, what's kind of going on. The other thing is functionality requests. This could be a real frustration. So and a really interesting one recently. We like to put like pop-ups and not pop-ups, but like pop-in forms, things that go onto the page to say, by the way, we've got this thing. Um, little calls to action, CTAs around the website. And it was really limited within HubSpot, what you could do in this particular type. And it was like, okay, well, we could go off and get something else. That'll mean adding a plugin to the website and it's gonna add load time in the JavaScript. And I was really key. We just rebuilt the website. It was super lean. I didn't really wanna do that. And I was, it was a bit of a trade-off. We'll, we'll trade off the fact that we can't have so much functionality, but it'll be fast. And then literally the next day, and I think people have been asking for this for four years, um, it popped up and they've got this really, really interactive call to action builder that you can use. But if that was just lucky, it just happened to be launched when we wanted it. That can be the thing. You can really need some functionality and the all single dancing system might not have it. So really check what it is you want. And that's why you go back, you look at that journey, you work out what you need to do and you work out, can the system do those specific things? There's nothing worse than going down the customer service route and being told, oh, yeah, we don't do that, but it is on our roadmap. Yeah, when? It's like, yeah, that's not... That's it. Yeah. That's not going to cut it, exactly. Yeah. That's just it a always, some when. <laughs> it amazes me, actually, because when I go through and a system is, I've got no expectation that I'm going to pick up the phone and say, I'd like you to build this Salesforce or HubSpot. And they go, sure, we'll do it now. Why not? <laughs> this is not realistic, right? Whereas our big clients think that of us. So we'll have these big global corporations that go, yeah, could you just customise it to do this? And we're like, um, sorry we, no actually we go okay yeah we will, yeah. We, will do it, okay? we will do it but it's just like we, we love a that. challenge yeah, yeah. No, 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 we've got a problem to deal with but i think you've got to have realistic expectations of what you're going to get from that point of view as well so um, go into this starting off with what you need to achieve so you want a list of we have to have this we'd like this this would be great in the ideal world but it's not entirely necessary and then you can help select uh, what you get from that as well if you've got there are free trial versions of a lot of these things as well that you can play around with but it's really hard to test it out. So ask them for a demo account because you can access demo accounts and you can go and play around them and see what they're like. And I think this is one of my last bits on this, but usability. I've had some really, really powerful CRMs that are so tricky to use that there's only experts on the team who can do it. And it then it, it boils down your vendor specific and certain staff specific. Whereas if you've got something that's really usable and that's what I love about HubSpot, it means that you can go through to get stuff done. I want to focus on the creative. I want to focus on getting the email campaigns. I want to focus on the copy, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to be spending hours on fiddling around in the system to try and get the trigger set up properly and so on as well. So the easier it is to use, the more you're probably going to do with it um, as well from that point of view. Um, so we'll put all of this stuff into the show notes. We'll put that see, think, do, care template with the objectives and all that kind of stuff that we created for GA4 in there as well. But we'd like to hear from you. If you are a CRM vendor, give us a shout. We can get you on the podcast. Mm. But also tell us what you love and your horror stories about CRMs as well. Um, I have seen them bring people to tears. They can be so frustrating. So let us know your story. So targetinternet.com forward slash podcast. And we have got the Toolkit Awards coming up. So if you are a CRM or you've got one you love, nominate it. July, sorry, June the 23rd, the nominations are open. Uh, get those CRMs nominated. There is a category specifically for this stuff. Uh, and you'll be able to get the recognition and rewards that you deserve. And also you can vote. Uh, and if you particularly don't like something, you don't need to vote for it. You can vote for the others <laughs> as well. So as ever, thank you for listening to the Digital Marketing Podcast. And we'll see you next time. Please subscribe for more videos like this and visit targetinternet.com for more free digital marketing resources.